Uh, well, before the war, I had plans, of course. Uh, I have very distinct plans. I know what I want to do because when I don't have a plan about my career and studying, I'm very nervous, I'm very anxious, and yeah, it's, it can lead to not nice mental uh, situations, let's say like that. Uh, and when the war happened, uh, everything changed like this. <laughs> Um, my name is Stacia Kosinok. I'm 21 years old. I grew up uh, in Kyiv, uh, in Bucha, but mostly in Kyiv. I lived with my mother, with my sister, uh, and yeah, I had average life, I guess. <laughs> It's 24th of February, somewhere around 4 or 5 a.m. and I wake up to the sound of explosions. For somehow I immediately understood that yeah, this is definitely explosions. So what I did, I just uh, opened my phone and I googled like explosions in Kiev. Nothing. I was like, yeah, sure, okay, I will wait again. Then like, once again, boom, boom, boom. B because in the movies, of course, like bangs, explosions, ta ta ta. But in reality, it's very, it's loud but it doesn't sound as dramatic as I expected it to sound, I guess. Uh, so I went again uh, on the internet, I googled explosions in Kyiv. The article that I found, it was all in capital letters. Putin declared special operation on Ukraine. So I'm teaching there, uh, there are explosions from, uh, from bombarding, from airstrikes. And the best thing I could come up with is to feel my cringy goodbyes. So that's what I did. What can I say? I think I've been a long time to Kyiv. What I would like to hear that people would hear if I died? But I didn't think of anything. I didn't think of anything. I just, maybe, I would like to say that те люди, которые получат это видео сообщение, то что они для меня много значили, потому что я отправила действительно это немногим. И второе то, что да, у меня музыка на заднем фоне и башет, и что вы мне, блядь, сделаете? Слушаю, что хочу, подарок, обстрел или что там нахуй скидываю чесноки. Immediately woke up because I thought, okay, maybe it's like airstrike, maybe something. So it was very draining physically, emotionally. Because of the curfew, a lot of people weren't allowed to be outside at all, even at daytime, because we had reports of a lot of uh, Russian, um, how do you call it, derge. So basically, it's like Russian spies uh, that came here before the war. And for example, if uh, people would see someone in, um, in the middle of curfew, they would call territorial defense, and they would be uh, for cotton spot. If not, shot. The screaming were, were very intense because it was just, just under my windows, like, like at, the, at that alley. I wanted to fight, but I'm not a soldier. So I decided that my best option is to leave my country behind. And then I got a letter from, uh, from my university with an offer that for, uh, I can go to Amsterdam, to Freie University. And it was like, in capital letters, uh, they were read, you have two days to go to Lviv. And I'm like, great. We got to the train station, and that's when I saw 
a lot of people because it was it was so packed. Uh, I, I, it almost was impossible to get in. I can't go and visit. Like this is a wait. What is going on? What is happening? Is it the night? No, there is no end. I just wanted to get out of here. It was very chaotic. I felt very nervous and anxious. I don't know if you can see it or not. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's like a cry and a cry from the truth. Imagine what will happen when they arrive in Lvov. So eventually I ended up in the Netherlands. I wish I still have this photo with all those flowers, this Ukrainian and Dutch flag. Yeah, very nice. Uh, I still have this photo with all those flowers, this Ukrainian and Dutch flag. Yeah, very, very nice. Uh, and then... Uh, a professor writes me, okay, there is an option to give a speech at Dam Square. Can you please participate? I was like, okay. So yeah, don't feel nervous, but there will be a lot of people. There will be a mayor. You will be, uh, it will be very symbolic because you will give the speech in front of this monument and there is also a world new country. So good luck. And Glenn, good luck. Thank you very much. Uh, anyways, yeah, so that's how I ended up uh, giving a speech on uh, Dam Square. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so none of us could ever imagine waking up to the sound of bombs dropping on our houses. None of us believed that it would be and just after a few days, it really said that... The bomb would take time to check out. Please remember to check out. I feel homesick sometimes. I, uh, I do because I usually feel very like lonely, I would say, when I'm in Amsterdam because I don't see my friends, I don't see my, I don't see anyone that uh, with whom I can, I have a deep connection, and I'm here on my own, so I have to like figure out working, university. It feels like I'm always kind of under the stress. Доброго вечера, доброго вечера. Что вы, как вы, как дела? Да ничего, так потихоньку. Ты знаешь, погода такая хорошая установила, солнышко э, такая и подмораживала чуть-чуть. Мы с собакинами на улицу вышли, э, вот, погуляли с ними хорошо. Ну, вот так вот. Как... I feel very guilty and I I think a couple of times I was like on the verge of just spiking my things with like, no, fine, I'm, I'm going back to Ukraine. I really wanted to go to territorial defense and I feel very guilty because I always say that, but I'm not doing it. So it's like I'm selling my, my principles, I'm selling my views for let's say successful career or life studying, it doesn't matter. So that's, this is the main reason why I sometimes have mental breakdowns over it. Because yes, I feel I feel that I'm lying even though I know it, but it feels like I'm yeah, it feels guilty and if and like I'm too faced person. Yeah. Probably am, but <laughs> Культурные люди, культурные уже украинцы. Знаем, уже знаем, да, да. Это, это их, это их I need to go back to Ukraine to give to make my passport because mine has expired, uh, and also I need I want to go to Bucha to see it by my own eyes what has happened during the occupation. Сама вулиця Яблонська, де була, були всі ті тіла. Ну так, це що забрав ту машину. Вони собі їздили мимо. Собі їздили, так. А що було далі по вулиці, ви ж розумієте, що по нашій ну, да. вулиці не ходили, тому що розстрілювали. And my grandmother and grandfather, they are somewhere here. Last time I was here when I was 10. And I wouldn't have ever thought that I will be here under such circumstances. It was very sad because it said that uh, probably family wrote it that we are sorry that we couldn't keep you alive. We are really sorry that we are really sorry that it happened to you. It's our fault. It's not just fault, but 
they still feel sorry, and I feel sorry for them because I just want to know them. I just want them to know that it's not their fault. They mm -hmm. couldn't do it. It can't. It's just what I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm really sorry. Добрый вечер. Ну, вы уже так через 30-40. Ну, ты, мам, откроешь мне? Ну, и снова здравствуйте. Алло. О, алло. Шапаки! Шапаки! Так, заходим, поздоровались. Все работает, все на месте. Пять бутылей воды — это типа на запас? Тая, ну так Пять, воды же два, не три, было. три, четыре, пять, шесть, семь, понятно. Воды вот. же не было, это хоть свет сейчас стали давать. Мы... Вырубали? А? В смысле воды? Я думала, это такое электричество. Не-не-не, и воды не было тоже. Так мы на всякий случай это самое, воду запаслись. I'm not a tactile person. That's the reason. I, do, I don't like hugging with people, actually. And when you see me doing this, because I'm doing this out of politeness. Шабака, ты не вообще помнишь, что я такая? Собака, не, он, конечно, меня помнит. Да, да. With my close friends, they, do, they know that I'm not a tactile person at all. I don't like people touching. Oh my God, I haven't played for ages. Not even my mother. Not even in the war. I don't like hugging, sorry. <laughs> Что-что? Тая. Ну что за слова какие-то, не ну, ну, ну ладно, ладно. Нравится ли тебе следующая мелодия? А ну. Собственно, наконец-то дома, да, наконец-то, наконец-то я посплю на своей любимой кровати, ну, потому что, не знаю, бач ты, не бач ты, да и похуй. А, как бы сидим, слушаем музон, как бы, да, чилим, отдыхаем, играем в Overwatch, пока есть время. Вот, так что довольно, довольно, что в конце концов хоть посижу в своей комнате, так что всем удачи. And she starts talking about some kind of funeral uh, services that is going on inside this church. Я мама сама загиблого. Для мене це біль і це наші діти. Розумієте, для кожного тата, дружини, дітей це велике горе, з яким нам дуже важко справлятися. Ну ми справляємося, бо ми сильні, ми українці. Я знаю, що моя дитина і ці хлопці загинули героїчно, отдавши своє життя за незалежність і свободу України. Царство небесне, мої мандрюшечки. For some reason, I'm like feeling very sad. And even though I would never thought that I was a very sensitive person in terms of when someone telling me their story, but still, it, it just it hates me for some reason, and I, I'm always feeling like like crying. <laughs> Even though 
that the room is damaged, the memories are not. Uh, I, it, 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 all the surroundings can be fixed. So if the people are there, then it doesn't matter in which shape all the environment is because it can be fixed by those people if they are around. So I hope, well, it will get better. І просто хотіла з цього кліпу подякувати вам, тому що не якщо б не ви, не було б ні дрібно, не було б навіть до всього цього. Правда, тобто і зараз, і навчання, і все, і робота. Тобто, все, все, все через вас, по суті. Я дуже рада, що так склалося. Я рада, я так спостерігаю трохи там в мережах, як воно все відбувається. I had a classmate of my SMN. Very sweet, very nice. I just was scrolling through my stories on Instagram and I saw some Instagram story with his face. I was like, what? And it was like black and white. I was like, yeah, okay, what happened? So I clicked uh, on the post and I saw that he died in Severodonetsk. I think he died under artillery fire. He was my age, we, we were in the same class. And you understand that now, basically, well, not, not kids, of course, but still like 20, 21. And those people were, are dying now. And this is the reality that you have to live in where well, such young people die, so it, it made me really sad. If Ukraine will not win, I will play myself until the end of my life because I could have done something and I didn't. And so I guess I'm hoping for the best and I'm trying to believe in the armed forces of Ukraine that they will manage without me. Probably maybe it will be much easier for them, knowing myself. Uh, so, yeah.